Hey guys, what and welcome you back to the Sensu Pop channel. Today we have a match for you. It is gonna be the draft box. I think this was the draft box Krillin, isn't it? Or oh, this is a promo Krillin. This is a really, really old leader against uh, Gotenks, which I am, uh, I'm playing. The Krillin player, it's gonna be Scott Sigmund. I believe that if you're a fan of this channel or you are subscribed to this channel, he is not a uh, he is he must be really familiar to you because we do quite a lot of events together he is he was my co-host in the previous uh, card market event pretty really really nice chat and uh, he is helping me to do some play testing and also to record some games for you guys and if you can see this new uh, layout that i'm having here it's because um, i hope you like it give me some comments like is this better how to make it better i'm learning how to use obs stream lab and uh, this is my first product that i actually record from it um, thing is uh, i'm trying to learn how to do this better the reason is eventually i just want to showcase uh, my play testing process before I do a deck profile, usually I playtest them and I want to include all of you together with me to do the playtesting. So that is what I want to do eventually and hopefully let me give me a little bit of time to master it and hopefully we can do this together. All right, so here we go. This is going to be game one. It is going to be Krillin versus Gotenks. Gotenks is the Gotenks Maidens and uh, yeah, I am going to go first, I believe. And here we go. Oh, we are going to do the dice roll. But for some reason, uh, I am so, so lucky this day. This is not the first deck. We recorded so many games together. And uh, every single game, I win with the dice roll. It's either that there is uh, I'm really lucky or there is uh, cheating involved from my side. And most probably, it's cheating. <laughs> All right, halfway through the... Um, Halfway through the stream, you can see that there's going to be a little bit of problems with the Discord. Um, we will go to that later. Turn one, and uh, this is almost a good start for me, uh, Zabuto, uh, to do my searcher. Um, Gotenks draws one, unlike Maiden's leader, which looks up to top two and pick a card. Uh, Zabuto basically just uh, takes uh, helps me with the draw, right? Since turn one, I usually doesn't have a lot to play. Um, Scott deck it's Krillin and it, he's just gonna go s uh, swinging with crit you can see the Janimba engine and this Goku and I have to take the first damage already that shocking death ball would be really nice but I don't know what he was playing so um, so I, I there was an element of surprise for me and so uh, he's gonna go for Krillin and when Krillin swings he takes a life and he draws a card really good Helps him to self-awaken. The good part for me is at least he's not going for crit. But you can see how aggressive is the Krillin deck. Now I am down to 6 life. The good part about the Gotenks leader is this though. Um, over the Rebrand leader is that you can tap 2 to play your Unison card. Once the Unison card comes into play, you can already awaken. So tap 2, play the Unison card, untap 1, draws another 1. Pretty good. It's just much easier to defend at 15 against a deck that's swing crit, 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 than anything. And now I can swing at to clear his board because that card is going to be pretty, pretty dangerous. And I'm just going to go for his uh, board and try to take it out. He has a lot of hand size. I think that's 8. And uh, Krillin really generates a lot of hand size if he doesn't want to go for crit. He doesn't drop when he awakens, but every single turn he is a minimum draw 2 when he awakens. So I've tried to delay the process a bit. Gotenk Maidens actually takes a little bit of time. And uh, one of the good parts for playing Zabuto on turn 1 is that now you have a Universe 2 on board. That's why you can see here, Rabandra, when there's a Universe 2 on board, it is you can play him for free. He is a blocker. Together with the Unison, now you have a Revenge blocker on the board. And your Unison is a plus 2. That means your Dormant Potential and your um, Charismatic Villain is going to be online. You can see here that I have a problem with the Discord. Unfortunately, uh, that is always my problem. And uh, if I'm going to join the tournament, I usually tell the guy who is uh, recording it, oh, who is recording it to say that you know I have this problem please uh, you know bear with me and uh, there's nothing much I can do over there all right I have to change the life uh, 
and not just uh okay so you can see right now it is uh already so fast it is going to be five against six life so 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 such a fast game but once gotenks gets to two energy and with the unison down usually things stabilizes i have six life that is good awaken that is good however i'm playing the gohan super combo so i really want to take some life just make sure that I can uh, use the super combo. Why the Gohan super combo? It's because uh, Jamisa, which is in my hand, sometimes like I open up with two Jamisa, I would like to use the Gohan super combo to put a Jamisa back into the deck. That's something that I want to do. And I think it works really well, especially with this deck itself. All right, here we go. This is, he is gonna play Sake Demon. Sake Demon is basically a searcher for him. He plays the new uh, Janimba engine. It swings with crit, dual attack crit, and stuff like that. That goes with the, um, with all this, uh, with the skillless card. And the turn ends back to me. This is five life against six. I have to keep a lookout for that. Gonna swing, and he is gonna go down to Four lives. Okay, so he can awaken already, which is dangerous for me. However, getting to four life is very important in this deck. He is going to combo with Nimbus Master. Nimbus Master, uh, when you combo with Nimbus Master, you go to a deck. I think deck or drop area, I don't know. I have to read up on the card. You get to play a two drop skillless card. Um, skillless battle card onto your board and that is the Janimba that he can place the three drop on top of it pretty good the problem is he is playing against green which is going to be very difficult for him you can see that I already passed my turn the reason is because I don't have the right cards in my hands uh, that one drop reprint but then again this deck is very defensive if I don't have the cards to do my play most probably I have the cards to defend myself that's how this deck is played a couple of times Pretty love, loving this deck. If you are looking for the deck profile, drop me a message in the comment section. Um, if I get enough uh, messages, like comments, I will, uh, or drop me a like, and uh, I will do a deck profile on Gotex Maidens. It's really, really good. I mean, it is the best, I, I believe for my side, it is one of the best one. But Joseph Blinko said that he, he has a pretty good one. Uh, I'm not going to compete with him because he is basically the maiden, the god of maidens. So I'm uh, pretty sure he has a better deck um, than me. Yep. Um, I'm really excited to see his list though. So guys, if you don't know who uh, Joseph Blinko is, he is the guy who topped, I think, 16 one time with Maidens in uh, in original. <laughs> that tells you how good that guy is with uh, the Maidens engine. So I'm kind of really excited to see this. All right, here we go. And so he's going to bounce off the two drop uh, Janimba. I was going to take, I am going to take the damage instead of just uh, doing anything to his uh, stuff. The reason is simple because I want to KO the more uh, horrible card, which is the critical card and not the skillless card. So here we go. That's the problem over here. The chain does not have barrier. So charismatic villain just pops the chain. He is going to be tapping two to play the skillless card. The skillless card, untap one, and then he is going to be awakening. He does not draw when he awakens, but he draws two. At, he draws another card at the end of the turn every single time. He's going to swing, and now I am going to pop off his uh, skillless battle card. I think now it's pretty safe. My charismatic my uh, shocking death ball cannot hit his three drop so now uh, i have to take out his two drop like i said this deck is also very defensive and aggressive at the same time i i really like this deck he reduces the he swings to my unison card taking one marker off but this unison card it's plus two every single turn it's a 15k it's it's pretty difficult to re be removed all right here we go he, wow he is gonna be swing Oh yeah, he is going to be swinging with his thinking, 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 thinking. He's going to swing with Sake Demon. 1k. What is he going to do? Um, I'm at 5 life, so I'm pretty comfortable. If he wants to do that, that's totally fine by me. He's going to be super comboing, so now it's 11k. And uh, here we go. It is going to be 16k onto my leader. I'm going to take the damage. Um, 
now my Gohan Super Combo is online and if I have a Jamisa in my hands, I can put it back and just to draw two, make sure I have a Jamisa in my deck. Very, very important. Right, and uh, he is going to be tapping out to play another skill as Jam uh, Janimba, Jamisa, Janimba, Jamimba. And he's going to swing. And uh, who is his target? Yes, it is going to be my Unison taking out one more marker from the Unison. He ends his turn. I am going to be drawing one. Now I am putting down my fourth energy. You can see that the combo is right there. Jamisa, Ribrian, and Saloin all over there. Going to swing at his... Um, am I going to swing? Mm-hmm. I'm going to swing at his, I don't know, most probably I'm going to swing at his Sake Demon. Okay, he is going to be Baby Hatchiak, negating the attack without any energy by just dumping one card into the drop area. Basically, this turn is his because I cannot attack anymore. With four energy, I think I try to do the next best thing, which is try to go defensive or set up my next play. And I am going to be most probably... Um, putting a Rabandra, set up two blocker. I believe that he does not have anything to take out my deck, my board. And I'm going to be tapping three to play Jamisa. The good part about Rabandra here, you can see that I did not drop four uh, Jamisa. The reason is I want him to take out my Jamisa. If, because the next turn it's going to be five, right? And I'm pretty comfortable with my hands with my very high uh, unison card, Doma potential and stuff like that. I want him to take out my Jamisa because if he pays some calls to take out my Jamisa, that means he is not taking care of my Verbandra, which is two revenge blocker. And if he doesn't have it, so that's good. And uh, so it is kind of like a trap for him. And uh, he is going to be ta pulling that two drop uh, skillless card back into his hands to play that three drop. However, again, I do have a charismatic villain and I'm not going to let him go up the chain. That three drop, it's going to swing two times with crit. I'm not going to allow it. Okay, and I'm going to combo out. I want to stay at high, high life just in case. I'm not too sure what his deck does. So I am just uh, making sure, especially if it is just a 15k swing. I feel that uh, I am very comfortable with that. All right, he still have four opens, uh, four open energy though, so that must be really difficult to handle. Tapping two to play another two drop, and I'm gonna shocking death ball to kill it. So that he doesn't get go up the chain, make him pay more if he wants to do it. And he's tapping one to play uh, Nimbus Master. I think Nimbus Master can remove something from the drop. I don't know. Yep, maybe. Yep, from from your drop to warp, and you can play Nimbus Master. 15k swing onto me, and I'm gonna take that life. If it's not crit, I will do it. So the life total now it's four to three. Um, you would think that okay, it's a lot of uh, life left for Krillin. The 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 thing is, when it comes to maidens, I'm swinging with triple strike anyway, so I don't really care. For um, with that Saloin next turn with Saloin and uh, Rebrian, it's gonna go for one swing 30k, one swing 30k triple striker. So. Basically, it's gonna swing a lot, so I don't care. So here we go, the fifth energy. And um, yeah, and he's gonna swing with man on the mission, but I'm gonna block with my blocker to KO it. Here we go, he is gonna be swinging with um, gold tanks to one of his battle card. Yep, yeah, I'm gonna swing into his Nimbus Master. Most probably, I'm just gonna draw a card because the big one is coming, board clear. Saloin. Saloin plays any uh, mono green card, which is three or less from my hand, uh, four or less. And Rebrian, it's uh, five cores. However, with Jamisa on the board, Rebrian is three cores. And here we go. Rebrian drops on the board, KOs everything. Here we go. Saloin, 30k, triple, uh, 30k single strike, which is, and also the best part about this deck is that it is also very defensive. Yep. He's going to combo out of this 30k. 
I'm gonna come, I'm gonna swing with my, he has to, because the next swing it's gonna be Rebrian anyways, right? So here we go, we're gonna swing with uh, Jamisa, going for the Gohan, put back a card, draws two, such a good super combo. He's gonna take the damage, 30k, triple striker Rebrian, and here we go. The thing is, I still have two energies open with everything. It's going to get revenge at the end of the turn from the Vegito's uh, unison effect with dormant potential with charismatic villain. I don't think I have charismatic villain left, but uh, with charismatic villain, you can see how powerful the defensive is. It's Saloin, when you KO it, your opponent cannot attack battle cards anymore. Your opponent's leader card cannot attack a battle card. You can see that he has no battle cards anymore. That means his leader cannot attack if he cannot take out um, Rebrian on the board because Rebrian needs him to attack her, right? So it's a it's a pseudo lock and together with dormant potential with a negate and a blocker on the board it is very difficult to punch through while being aggressive at the same time. I love this deck a lot. It does take a little bit of setup and if your opponent knows what to do you might be in a little bit of problem. However, it is a pretty pretty good deck. I love it. Thank you so much for joining me. Um, Thank you so much for joining me and um, yeah, so I hope you like the layout. Like again, I'm testing out OBS Streamlab and hopefully I'm able to bring you some live stream games, you know, when I'm just do it going live and you guys join me in the chat and we just have a chat, discuss some, um, discuss some ideas for a deck and we build a deck together. All right. Hey guys, thank you so much for joining me. Take, uh, take care, stay safe and see you guys in the next video. Ciao, bye.